Question nine. You are on course 302 degrees per standard magnetic compass when you take the following bearings. Little Gull Island light 283 per steering compass, Race Rock light 311 degrees per steering compass, and Latimer Reef light 027 degrees per steering compass. What is your position? And you can see by these answers that the positions are all very close. So this is again gonna be an exercise in precision plotting. And there's two real things for the strategy on this problem. One is finding these lights on the chart. And then second, we'll be um, converting them from per standard magnetic compass to true bearings if we wanna plot on the chart. So I guess let's start with finding the lights. And so the first light is Little Gull Island light, and that's at bearing 283 degrees per standard magnetic compass. And I know from a previous problem that Little Gull Island is here and there's a light, so that's good to go. The next one is Race Rock light at 311 degrees per standard magnetic compass. And that one is not labeled on the chart. So um, I can get a rough idea by saying, okay, Little Gull Island is to my west, so I'm somewhere out here. Race Rock Light is to my northwest, so it should be the light should be up in this vicinity then. And that's my guess, but to be sure, we can look into the light list in the index and we'll look for Race Rock Light. Race Rock Light, Light 18395. So light 18395 is race rock light. Here's its latitude and longitude, so I could plot that. Or the way that I like to do it is just look at the light characteristic and its height and geographic range. So it's a flashing red 10 second, um, and it's 67 feet high and has a range of 19. So if I look over on the chart, it says it's a flashing red 10 second, 67 feet with a range of 19 meters. So that's clearly race rock light. So I've got Little Gull Island, I've got race rock, and then um, it says Latimer Reef Light is to my northeast, so if I'm spitballing this, I'm going to say that Latimer Reef Light is somewhere up here. It could be this one, this one, this one, this one, I guess. Um, and again, it's not labeled on the chart. Um, so we'll look into the light list again. And in the index, we'll look up Latimer Reef Light. Latimer Reef Light, light 18665. Latimer Reef Light. Great. So again, it's got its latitude and longitude, its characteristic, its height, and its geographic range. So it's a flashing white six second at 55 feet. And this is a flashing white six second, 55 feet with a geographic range of nine miles. So this is Latimer Reef Light. So my three lights are this one, this one, and this one. So that means my fix is gonna be somewhere out here. Uh, but again, the question gives us all of the information in per standard magnetic compass. So we're going to have to change that to um, true bearings. And again, we'll use the uh, memory aid, true vampires make dull companions at wakes. And if we're adding east, if we're going that way, we add east. And if we're going that way, we add west. So let's just make a table and we'll use Little Gull Island light. We'll use Race Rock light and we'll use Latimer Reef light. And so we want um, to put in the information that we know and find the information that we're looking for. So in the problem, it tells us that uh, Little Gull Island was at 283. Race Rock was at 311, and Latimer Reef was at 027 degrees. These are all per steering compass. Um, and it says that our heading was uh, 302 degrees. So kind of similar to the other problems that we've done, we need to look into the deviation table for a heading of 302, and 302 is not there, 
But if I take a rough estimate between 300 and 330, the change in deviation is 0 to 1.5 east. And I am 2 thirtieths of the way through that. So 2 out of 30 times 100. So I'm 6% of the way from 0 to 1.5. So uh, based on that quick math, I'm going to go with 0 for my deviation um, instead of having like a decimal 2 or something in there and just needing to round it anyway. So deviation is 0. And you can also kind of tell the course writers probably intended you to use 0 because they gave you a course that's close to 300. So anyway, that makes our magnetic courses 283 magnetic. 311 magnetic and 027 magnetic. So then variation was uh, listed in the front matter of the problem, and variation is 15 west. So I'm going this way in the problem, so I need to add easterly errors or subtract westerly errors. And so if I do that, we're going to get. 268 for Little Gull Island. And then uh, 296 for Race Rock Light. And 0012 for Latimer Reef Light. So these are the lights and the true bearings that I'll need to plot on the chart. So I'll plot all of those and see where our fix ends up. Cool. So I have three bearings, one from Little Gull Island, one from Race Rock Light, and one from Latimer Reef, and they all cross pretty well for a visual fix. So I circled it as a visual fix. And now what I need to do is um, the problem asks me to find the latitude and longitude of that fix. But again, it says the latitudes and longitudes are all pretty close. Um, so there's two ways that I could uh, solve this. One would be to just read the latitude and longitude of this position and then see which one is the closest. Or I could actually plot all four of these positions and then see if, um, you know, if mine is not exactly one of these, what the closest answer is, what the best answer is. So a lot of times when I do particularly the celestial navigation exams, I like to plot all four answers because they're really close and it's seldom that you're going to end up exactly there. So why don't we, um, plot our answer, see what we come up with, and then plot all four answers as well, just to be sure. Okay, so I plotted mine, and this is what I came up with for this exact position here. But I also plotted all four, and you can see uh, for my longitudes, I have A, uh, B, and then C and D in the middle. And then for the latitudes, I have A and B had the same here, uh, C down here, and D here. So the closest choice for me is uh, either C or D on the longitude and D on the latitude. Um, clearly not C on the latitude. So I'm very comfortable uh, with the fact that what I came up with and all four choices of the, the question, um, that D is the correct answer. So I would go with D as my final answer. All right, and finally for problem number 10, um, we're going to be needing to find the, the ETA from point A to point B. So uh, the problem says that 1103, you are in the entrance to Great Salt Pond on Block Island with buoy 5 close aboard. What is your ETA or estimated time of arrival at light number 1 at the mouth of the approaches to Lake Montauk if you make good 8.2 knots? So uh, first part of this problem is finding these two points. 
And I remember earlier we did a problem with Great Salt Pond. So if I look closely, there's buoy number five. Um, and it says I'm close aboard buoy five. And on this scale of chart, which is definitely not one I would navigate on, I'm just going to call that my position uh, for my origin. And then um, Lake Montauk. Again, I remember earlier in the exam, Montauk was over here. But if I didn't know where Lake Montauk or Montauk Point was, I could use the Coast Pilot and go in here, look up Lake Montauk. Uh, it's on chart 13209, page 140. And then on page 140, I see uh, Montauk Harbor at the northern part of Lake Montauk. It's about three miles west of Montauk Point. So that'll help me find it if necessary, um, if I didn't know where it was. So it looks like that is over here. And then the problem says that uh, I'm at light number one at the mouth of the approach. So here is flash and green number one. So I'm just going to call that our destination position. Again, not a scale of a chart that I would navigate on for real, but uh, they're trying to get at us uh, solving an ETA problem in this. So the strategy is simply um, measure the distance from A to B and then figure out the the speed that we made good, and then just calculate the time from there. Um, so it takes us over some pretty shallow water, but it doesn't tell us anything about our draft, so that's fine. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, you can't use the rolling weems because they don't connect. Uh, luckily, you can use these guys. And so here is my origin at Great Salt Pond, buoy number five. Here's my destination, uh, Lake Montauk, buoy number one. And I need to measure this distance. So what I can do is set these to five nautical miles and just kind of walk down the track line. So that would be five miles. That would be 10 miles. That would be 15 miles. And then for the remainder, what I can do is measure what's left. And it says that I've got 2.5 extra miles. So that was a total of 17.5 nautical miles. And it says that I'm going um, 8.2 nautical miles per hour. So how long will it take me to cover that distance? So I could take 17.5 uh, divided by 8.2, and it tells me it'll take 2.13 hours to cover that distance. So uh, I need to convert this 0.13 hours into minutes. So if I multiply that by 60, it tells me it's two hours and uh, eight minutes of travel time between the points. And then so in the problem, it states that um, I left at 11.03 and it's asking me what time I arrived. So if I left at 11.03 and it took me two hours and eight minutes, then I should get there at 13.11 would be my ETA. So if I look at my choices, uh, 1310 is the closest and the other ones are all pretty far away. So 1310 would be my final answer. So that solves every problem on the exam. Hopefully that serves you well as you study uh, for the 100 ton master exam. Good luck. Yeah.